time for another unboxing video and this one is kind of a part two. We're going to finish up the uh, box that we did in the last video, the box that we started. And uh, so if you like comic books, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bubby. Welcome to Shanghai. My name is Duke. This is an unboxing video. And as I noted, we are finishing up the, the second half of the box that we started in the last uh, the last video. Uh, I got a little chatty. It sometimes happens. And so, uh, yeah, it was just too much content for one video. Trying to, trying to keep these things down to under 30 minutes. 20 minutes maybe, you know, maybe would be ideal. And uh, that seems to be the consensus. I, I do get a lot of feedback that says, "Hey, go as long as you like. We we like the uh, we like the chit chat. And we like the reminiscing, uh, you know, and and the trivia and all that stuff." But there's also a fair contingent that's like, "Yeah, about 20, 25 minutes. That's about as much as I can do." And the algorithm certainly likes the shorter videos. So please do like, share, subscribe, comment. All that stuff helps with the algorithm. will help this channel to grow. And speaking of growth, I'm in the drive for five, trying to get to, actually trying to get to a thousand subscribers so that I can monetize. But first we got to get to 500. So the drive for 500, once I get there, I will give away two Bronze Age mystery boxes, uh, a box of 10, could be almost anything from the Bronze Age. Eh, they're roughly 68 to about 83 or 4 or so. 1968 to 1983 or 4 or 5, somewhere in there. Which I know does stretch the uh, Bronze Age definition a little bit. Some people would consider that the Copper Age, myself included. But there are certainly uh, a lot of sources that, that list all the way up into uh, 85 as still Bronze Age. But anyway, those boxes have uh, 10 Bronze Age books. And they are. I built those boxes there. They're mostly uh, 1970s books, probably about 90% 1970s. Two boxes. I'll give away both of them, two separate drawings, once I get to 500 uh, subscribers. And all you got to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment down below. And then you are automatically entered. So let us not waste any time. Let us, as Daffy Duck would say, yoinks and away. And we will get right to it. And actually, you know what? I'm going to swap out Starboy, who was our mascot in the last video. And we're going to actually, we're going to have Sunboy helping us out this time, if I can get him to stand. There he is. All right, let's pull out the first stack here and see what we've got to look at. What will, will I be grading today? Well, look at that. It's not in good condition. This says uh, poor... 0.5 but uh, as 0.5 it should still be complete but that's the marvel family number 23 and uh if you didn't see the last video or any of the recent videos the reason it's got a grade on it these were found in um mixed in with some fixed price items so on ebay we have multi-book lots we have you know the raw singles you know a, a single issue lot and, and I'm actually the guy who grades those books. And then we also have fixed price listings, something that's not going to be an auction item that people bid on, but it's just, you know, here's the price. <laughs> so anyway, we had a guy that we let go, and um, unfortunately, and he was doing the fixed price stuff, and so I was put in charge of so, sort of overhauling all of that. And so when I took a look at all the stuff that he had set aside for fixed price, and some of that stuff had been up on eBay for, you know, God, it's a couple of years, some of it just rolling over, rolling over, never getting bid because they were some of them were kind of dumb lots, frankly. Um, mixed in with all of that stuff in our shipping bins were these books that had already been graded single books, so they should have been auction lots, raw singles, and uh, apparently they just never went up. These aren't things that anybody you know didn't bid on um, or that got returned. They just appear to have gone all the way through the process of being graded and. We presume scanned, but never actually posted to eBay. So I have to go through these and just make sure the grade still tracks. And so that's pretty much what these are all about. So that's why you see labels on them and grades on them. So Amazing Spider-Man number 106. Here is uh, Spider-Man Annual or King Size Special, if you will. Number 5, first appearance of Peter Parker's parents. Pa-pa-pa. 
Eternals number 10. This series is hot right now. Um, <laughs> and if you've got some Eternals, I would I would recommend, you know, uh, unless you really do want to save them. And I can tell you, uh, I read these when they first came out mostly. And um, they're not that great. You know, this was this is latter day Jack Kirby when he was uh, not at his peak. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't something that I was always rushing to get off uh, off the newsstand because it just wasn't that great. I don't think the movie's going to be that great either, frankly. So if you've got these and you think you're uh, hanging on to them for an investment, by golly, I'd start moving those now. <laughs> <laughs> Strike before the you know before the fall. Uh, Eternals number fourteen. Here's Batman number two eighty six. That's uh thirty centers. So that's around nineteen seventy seven or so. Joker covers from this period do real well. Jim Apero. This Jim Apero is my Batman artist. So love me some Jim Apero. Nick Fury, Agent of Shield number nine. This is weird. <laughs> well, it's weird in that uh, it was apparently graded and you know with the intent of it being sold as a raw single. Superman: The Ten Cent Adventure. This was a gimmick that uh, DC did. In, oh, I don't know when this came out. Um, oh, here it is, right here, two thousand three. So uh, you know. They sold this book by the millions at uh, <laughs> 10 cents each. Uh, <laughs> I say by the millions, probably not that much. Uh, but um, yeah, that's... Uh, see, when we sell a book as a raw single on eBay, we like to get at least 10 bucks for it. We figure about 6 bucks or so is our break-even point. Uh, and so, you know, eh, between there and 10 is sort of our, our bottom line. We like to get at least 10. I don't think that's going to go for 10 bucks. So I'm going to probably pull that uh, and put it in a multi-book lot of some kind. Tales of Suspense, number 98. Here's something fun. Walt Disney's Donald Duck, number 28. This might get pulled, too, because it's pretty low grade. It says 2.5, but I think I might even grade it lower than that. I love, I love this deranged look on Donald's face. <laughs> he looks like an absolute psychopath there. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think that's going to go in a multi-book lot as well. I'll probably uh, you know, make a multi-book lot, an auction lot of some uh, low-grade Dell Disney books. Amazing Spider-Man number 128, The Vulture. Tour number one. Unfortunately, this doesn't do that well either. I'm not sure this will get to 10 bucks. It might. Currently, the market's pretty hot and things you wouldn't expect to sell that well are, uh, are are getting some crazy prices so yeah i guess i'll try this it says eight i see a lot of tick marks here that i might not give it an eight i'm not sure if it was me that graded these oh, there's a grading sheet not sure if it was me that graded these the first time around but um yeah this is a joe kubert property and joe kubert actually worked at this at another company i forget where and then did it at DC, and I'm not sure if, I don't think DC owns Tor. I think it was licensed from somebody else, and or Kubert had the rights. Not 100% sure, I'll have to look that up. Amazing Spider-Man 25, so there's some uh, Steve Ditko goodness for you. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one. Well, I don't think it is. Or at least it's a later printing. Let's go ahead and take this out of the bag. I'm curious to see which printing this is. It's obviously not the first. It's not really in... It's in pretty low grade, actually. Uh, what does it say here? Fifth printing. Well, look at that. Here's the fifth printing of TMNT. Tales to Astonish, starring Giant Man and the Wonderful Wasp. Against the Black Knight, who is going to be in the Eternals movies. Which is kind of an incongruous pairing to my mind. I, I don't see the I don't see really the Black Knight and the Eternals hooking horns. Batman number 118, the Merman Batman. So wouldn't he be the Merbat? 
Wouldn't that be better? Hmm. There you go. Avengers number 10, first, uh, not Avengers annual number 10, I should say. First appearance of Rogue. 9 0, so that should do well. Although, I question if that's a 9 0. Avengers 684. What's special about this book? This is pretty recent. Why were we selling this one as a single at one time? I don't know. It's a nice cover, though. Look good in a CGC case hanging on your wall. X-Men number 126. Classic cover. Dave Cockrum. Amazing Spider-Man 167. 170. This is uh, right around the... Uh, the time that I was big on Spider-Man as a kid, Dr. Faustus, loved me some Dr. Faustus. Batman Family, number six, I believe this is the first appearance of Dula Dent, the Joker's daughter, who is actually, spoiler warning, Two-Face's daughter. And it's a DC Bicentennial uh, thing, cover banner. There it is, boom. Number five, I think they were like... 35, 6, 7 of these, and if you cut off the top there, the little bicentennial banner, if you if you had them all and sent them in, you could get a Superman belt buckle, which I want to this day. Here's Batman, an issue of Batman with uh, Crazy Quilt, and this is a Whitman issue. We talked about this in the last box we saw in Action Comics. This is a... Uh, Oh, I'm not sure exactly what issue number this is. The Whitmans don't say on the cover, but I think this is somewhere in the 318, 319, somewhere in that range. But the Whitmans, uh, Whitman was uh, a division of Western Publishing uh, that did the Gold Key comics, and the Whitmans uh, were licensed books. They did their own Gold Keys as Whitman, but also DC, Marvel, other books. Uh, they licensed those. Uh, slapped their own logo on them and sold them in department stores and three packs and things like that. So as a, when I was a kid, and I was saying this in the last video, you know, I used to turn my nose up at these Whitmans. Didn't didn't consider them the real thing. They were just a reprint. They were a cheap knockoff. But these days they are highly valued because they are uh, relatively rare compared to the uh, to the regular issues. You know, and they kind of variant mania that we have these days these are considered uh, not low print runs so much lower you know than the regular books but also a fewer of these Whitmans survived in high grade and so uh, they are highly cherished and generally you know a Whitman book will you know, bring you about twice what the regular issue would bring so there's that Batman Adventures number one that's sweet. Amazing Spider-Man 365, hologram cover. I don't know if you can see that, if I move that around on the light just right. Uncanny X-Men 244, first appearance of Jubilee. And I've always hated that cover. I think that's just an ugly, ugly cover. X-Men number 85 from the uh, reprint era. And the title wasn't doing so well, so they just... Uh, they just reprinted the earlier stories until they could figure out what to do with the title. Uh, and as it turned out, they uh, <laughs> they did pretty well for themselves. There's uh, number 87. Number 88. 89. Let's pull out another stack here. Here's number 90. Oops, that's just some grading sheets. Uh, Green Lantern number 29 with uh, the black hand and this little halfsy thing. I don't know what's going on there. Do you know what's going on there? That's crazy. Uh, Incredible Hulk 377. This one I, I will pull and put in lots. This one, there was a lot of speculator interest in this uh, for a time because that's the first appearance of the uh, so-called Professor Hulk persona, uh, basically the smart Hulk. Uh, and so around the time of the Endgame movie, when that version of the Hulk uh, made his appearance, there was a lot of speculator interest in this. 
Um, but it's since cooled down. It's hasn't recently it hasn't done that well for us. And this is lower grade. Looks like I put a seven me or whoever graded it before put a seven on it. It is a newsstand copy, so it has that going for it. But this will probably be better put to use uh, rather than you know being a single and probably not getting to ten bucks. Uh, it would be better to put it in a multi book lot and let it sort of goose goose a lot up. And there's a uh, Nick Fury, Agent of Shield, number four. Boy, these white covers are hard to get uh, in high grade. It's a shield origin issue, but it sort of looks like shell origin issue. <laughs> uh, Journey into Mystery 119, Amazing Spider-Man 169. And even though that's a 4.5, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, you can sell those as singles all the way up until about 212. And it's really about this era, the 160s, 70s, 80s, where you, you'd like them to be at least 7 or 8s, but even a 4 or 5 you can sell on eBay and, and generally get at least 10 bucks for. Or at least we can because we have so many followers. We've been doing it for a while. We list hundreds of books every day. And uh, and so... Um, you know, we, we've got a we've got a following. You know, if you were just starting out and listed this, you know, because nobody knows you, uh, you might not do as well. You could build it up, but uh, yeah, that's that, even as a four or five, that should still still be worth selling as a single. Here is one ninety. Now I don't know why this one says four zero. It looks better than a four zero in the bag. Might have some water damage. I don't know. More grading sheets. 210, first appearance of Madam Web. A lot of speculation around her maybe appearing in future Spider-Man movies. Batman 261, a 100-page giant, super spectacular. Detective Comics 436. Fury of Firestorm number 23, and you might be asking, well... Isn't that a dollar book? Why on earth would you be selling this as a single? Well, at this point, it may be why indeed, but this book was hot for a while because this is the first appearance of Felicity Smoke, a character from uh, the Arrow TV show. Now that that show's gone, and now that uh, Felicity, uh, you know, last few years, well, she she ended up not on the last couple of seasons, I guess. I got kind of checked out myself after about the fifth season. But uh, when she first came along, and that character really took off, as I understand it, you know, they just gave her this name, that, uh, the Felicity Smoke name, just as sort of an Easter egg for fans. And uh, she was going to be like a one-off character. But both the character and the actress worked out so well that they decided to make her a regular recurring, and she became an integral part of the series. But anyway, this is the first appearance of Felicity Smoke in the comics. And here is Giant Size Avengers number one with some Invaders action for the All Winners Squad, if you will. All right, this is our last stack. And so after two videos, we are all the way through this box. Let's see what we're going to finish out with. See if we finish out strong. Hercules Unbound, that was a dollar book for about 30 years, but um, that does decently now. And maybe because it's got um, Wally Wood art. So there you go. And the Walt, I think in this case, is Walt Simonson. I think that's Walt Simonson and Wally Wood there. So that's a that's a cool thing. Another, another old grading sheet. Justice League of America, number 32. Two. No, I don't. I think Hawkman joins in thirty-one. I don't think this is the one where Hawkman joins. Love this helmet. You know, you ought to. <laughs> if you're going to a comic book convention and you want to cosplay, by golly, you ought to go as Brainstorm, because uh, that'll get you some attention. Uh, Crease Girl War number one. That is a. Uh, Oh, this came out in the 90s, I think. That's a reprint of the uh, Kree Scroll War issues of the Avengers. I, I, I don't really think that's a um, that's going to be a raw single. I'll probably pull that as well. 
I don't think that'd get to 10 bucks. Star Wars 68, that is popular. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Saga of the Swamp Thing 21. And that's uh, Alan Moore. What the heck is this? A little Eva. Ugh, you know what? I mean, it's low grade, and it, this probably wouldn't do well. I would probably do better to put this in a uh, a multi-book lot with some uh, similar types of items. It's got a lot of damage that was uh, noted when this was first processed. St. John Publishing. Kind of a short run, smaller company. But I don't think that would get to 10 bucks. This is a very nice cover. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, and I think... Stains on back cover, it says. Oh, that's unfortunate. But the legend I recall hearing on this one is that the cover was done first. It's a Walt Simonson cover, as you can see his signature down here. And the cover was done just kind of on spec. And so they wrote a story to sort of go with the cover. And I think this has some um, early Jason Todd action in it as well. I don't know if it's the first appearance. I don't, it's not the first appearance of Jason Todd. Or even his first appearance in costume. But it's an early Jason Todd, if I, if I recall correctly. But, uh, yeah. That's just a nice cover. You really can't tell because you got that big label over it. But, you know what? Hell, let's take it out of the bag and look at it. And we'll look at that stain on the back as well. So there you go. That's sweet. So yeah, as I recall reading in one of the fanzines many, many, many years ago, uh, that uh, that cover was done first, kind of on spec. And they're like, well, that's so nice. And and as opposed to today, where you would do just a kind of a, a poster cover that's got really nothing to do with anything, back in this era, you kind of liked your story to have some kind of passing resemblance to the cover. <laughs> <laughs> so they wrote a story to go with the cover. Where's the stains? Oh, here they go, right here. See? Not too, too bad. I wouldn't kick this book out of my collection for that. All right. And it looks like... Is this the last one, or are there two here? There are two here. There's Daredevil with the Jester, number 44. And the last... Book in this box, Ghost Rider number five. This is the ugh, second or third Ghost Rider series with the Punisher. It's got a Jim Lee cover. I don't think that's a ten dollar book though. I'll have to look it up, but I think that's something else that's going to be pulled and put in a multi book lot. But there you go, that's it. That's everything in that box. Like I said, it took two videos to do it, but <laughs> we had fun. Uh, looking at some cool old books and uh, chit-chatting the day away. So until we meet again, until the next video, rather it is an unboxing or a grading video or some other form of wholesome comic book goodness, until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.